It's showtime. <laughs> hey, beating friends. This is Kristen Fagan here with Softlex Company for a new episode of Free Spirit Beating. How are you doing out there in internet bead land? <laughs> oh, I am missing Tucson right now. I'm seeing a few of our friends. Um, like Jamie from the Bead Gallery and Candy Cooper are down there in Tucson, Arizona at the Gem and Bead Show. Also, um, I saw some posts from Brittany Shavers and she was at the African Market, which is one of my favorite places to go. So I'm kind of... Um, missing it right now and wondering if I'm going to get down there. It's just a drive away for me. Um, but I have an art show opening this weekend. So that kind of changes it for me this weekend. And I don't know what next weekend looks like yet. So we'll see. But I have a feeling I'm not going to get there this year. <laughs> Who's here? Hi, Gail. Hello, Pamela. Hi, Lydia. Hi, Marisol. Happy Monday. Hey, Nancy. Hey, Becky. Oh my gosh. I'm, I'm stringing right now just so that you guys don't have to watch me string a million beads when I turn the camera down so I can kind of chat, <laughs> chat and string a little bit um, to save some time. Hello, Sil Sylvia from Omaha. How is everybody doing? Marisol has been posting reels on Instagram of her visits. Let me see. Of the beach show. Oh, are you down in Tucson right now, Marisol? Ah, super jelly. I'm feeling <laughs> very envious. <laughs> Hi, Nancy. What shows have you gotten to? So for those of you that don't know what we're talking about, the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show um, happens twice a year, but the big one is really now um, in January, February. And it's not just one show, if you've ever been to a trade show or a gem show. Um, it's lots of little shows and big shows all over the city. Oh, you live in Tucson. Marisol lives in Tucson, so she gets to enjoy it right in her backyard every year. Um, but yeah, there's tents all over the place. People are selling out of convention halls. They're selling out of hotel and motel rooms. They're selling in um, set up tent parking lots and just all sorts of beads and gems and other wares as well. People come from all over the world to, um, to sell and connect with wholesalers and retailers alike. So it's, um, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot, a lot of fun. Sylvie is asking, what is your Instagram handle, Marisol? Yes, do tell so we can all live vicariously through your reels and see all the wonderful things you're seeing. I may even have to go back and like go through some pictures I've taken in the past and share them just to just to give everyone a little highlight reel. Oh yeah, 22nd Street Gem and Mineral Show, Jogs, To Be True Blue, that's where Softlex Company used to vend and that's where I would usually be for um, the most of the time. GLW, and tonight she's going to the Mojo Open House. Oh my gosh, so many fun things. <laughs> uh, Nancy is saying, what a great notice as I was just thinking about being ready to make a mama, but she meant to say mala necklace. Perfect timing, awesome. Yeah, I've made a couple. Um, actually, our friends over at beadshop.com, Kate Richberg and Janice, they shared a mala, I think it was last week, um, a wonderful mala design. 
Theirs was a little more traditional than what I'll be doing today. They did thread and knotting between the beads and um, had a nice, beautiful, long tassel and um, some gemstones and stuff. And I'm gonna take the idea and just change it up a little bit. My Guru bead is a little bit different and um, I will be using some gemstones for prosperity. I'm gonna use our little Lucky Cat that we got in the Lunar Design Kit, Lunar New Year Design Kit, and Happy Lunar New Year. That's tomorrow, so Happy Lunar New Year to everybody. Um, we still have some of those design kits left at softlexcompany.com, so you can pick them up. I'm gonna be using the, the Lucky Cat um, and the Saturn beads from the kit, and I'll share with you um, some other some other things that you'll get in that. Let's see, Marisol says, just hanging around too is her Instagram handle. If anyone wants to go check her out and go watch um, her reels of the shows, see what's going on over in Tucson. Hi, Deb from Dahlia Designs. Nancy has some beautiful jade to work with when she makes her mala, awesome. Hey, Carolyn, let me just make sure I didn't miss anybody else. Cool, yeah, so if you don't know what a mala is, um, malas have been around for centuries and they are a wonderful way to uh, use in meditation. I'm gonna show you what a friend made for me, just so you have an idea of what I'm talking about. They have um, a tassel generally at the end. This bead in the center is called the guru bead um, or teacher bead. And then there are 108 beads that go up the mala with some um, spacer beads in between. You don't generally count the spacer beads in the 108 beads total. They are just for um, placement so that when you're meditating, you don't have to look down, you can kind of see where you're at. And they have been um, surfacing all over the place recently. You've probably seen them out and about. They're really beautiful. They're traditionally made with wood beads um, and have knotting in between them. And you can find out more on, you know, doing a search on mala bead and mala bead necklaces but they are um, basically a visual reminder to your intentions and you can use them in meditation practice to count your mantras or your meditations or um, well, yeah, your mantras while you go through uh, practicing, getting to the 108. Becky says she would love to be able to go to a bead show, but it's physically challenged and not able to afford it. Yeah, it would be great if Arkansas had one. To be honest, Becky, they are not, um, they don't happen very often anymore. Bead shows have dwindled in number significantly. When I started with Softlex Company 19 years ago, we were doing over 50 shows a year. Um, we even had two teams go out so that we can be at two different shows at once because there were just so many to go to. And then through the years, that just kind of got knocked down to 20 shows, 10 shows, two shows. And now we're just online. We don't vend at any shows. So Tucson is even more special because you just can't find a lot of bead shows around the country anymore. Um, it would be lovely if they came back because they are, they are really wonderful. Thanks, Tammy. Tammy says, Happy Lunar New Year. Um, Sylvie's making a mala with rhodochrosite for a grieving mom. That's beautiful. It's really special to choose gemstones um, and put a little extra meaning behind our designs. And um, I love that you chose some loving rhodochrosite for, for your grieving mom. And uh, I'm gonna be working with pyrite and citrine because I am trying to call in prosperity this year. Um, I am, I do a word of the year. Does anyone else do a word of the year? 
I've been doing that for a long time now, almost a decade. And then I like to add in a symbol as well. Um, for example, last year my word was creatrix and my symbol was the snake and the rose. And this year my word is prosperity. And you'll see I have a, oh, this side, I have a money tree that I now have in my studio. Um, I picked that up just a week or so ago to, um, that's gonna be one of my symbols is the money tree. And then I was also looking at rainbows, pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. And now I've got this great little Japanese lucky cat from our kit that I'm gonna adorn. So pretty, um, pretty great. Oh yeah, so Deb is a gemstone girl. Her word of the year is action. That's a great word. Not passive at all, right? You're making things happen. Hey Fern, happy Monday. Hi Barbara. Marisol says sometimes she has shop shows for them. Um, but yeah, it is hard when you're shopping for somebody at a show because then you have to split your time. It's overwhelming when you go to these shows. You do need a lot of time to kind of, and a list of some things you don't want to miss because it's very easy to get distracted. <laughs> Lee is asking what a good gemstone is for anxiety. So some good stones would be ones that are very grounding. So that would be a lot of black stones are very grounding and good for, um, for anxiety, like black tourmaline is a great one. Uh, I think tiger's eye is also a really good one because it's also a lot of grounding properties. Um, and I'm sure there's a lot more. So if anyone else wants to chime in, if they know what uh, gemstones are good for anxiety, be free, feel free to comment. Tammy can't go either, but she's enjoying everyone's pictures. It is wonderful to see everyone's pictures. I love that everyone shares that they're there and shares pictures of what's going on. It helps us to feel uh, part of the action, doesn't it? Fern's word is hope. That is a beautiful word. I always love word of the year. Ramona's word is gratitude. So you can make... Um, yeah, so, the, you know, making an amulet, a talisman, a piece of jewelry that you can wear and adorn that reminds you of your word um, is a great way to incorporate your creativity and have a mindful, intentional piece of jewelry that you can wear to remind you throughout the year of the feeling that you want to create. I also paint, so I um, usually do a painted word of the year. And I did that this month um, on the 23rd over in my group, Discover Your Creative Magic. So if you're curious or are interested in painting, you can come join me over there and uh, just check out that process too. Yes, you did, Lydia. Lydia got to Tucson twice and we got to meet in person there. She came to the Softlex booth and I have a picture with you, Lydia. Um, that was really fun. That was when I first started doing videos too. So it was kind of like, oh, I'm meeting somebody that watches my videos. It was so sweet and so nice. So thank you for taking time to come visit me while you were there. Um, it's totally overwhelming. It really is. Monica's word is joy. Tammy's word is healing. Deb says she thinks rose quartz is also supposed to help with anxiety. Rose quartz is a very loving stone. So that makes a lot of sense. Um, that would be a great one to, to make something with. Amethyst is a grounding stone, says Ramona. And Monica has a hard time deciding between joy and renew. Um, yeah, you can choose two. You can have two words swirling around in your new year. Sharon, I have a Facebook group. Um, it's called Discover Your Creative Magic. And you can come join me over there. I'm also on YouTube as Kristen Fagan Art. 
and I'm trying to post more videos there this year. So you can come subscribe to me over on that channel too. Um, but the majority of the stuff happens in the Facebook group right now. Okay, let's see. So talking a little bit about malas, there are 108 beads in, um, in the design and you can split them up with spacer beads if you want. So you can decide to do 10 beads at a time and then put a spacer bead um, or there's lots of different other ways you can you know, work on how you want to add a little extra. Um, but the 108 is an important number and your spacer beads do not count towards that 108. So just be um, thoughtful by, with that. I'm thinking about breaking it up like this. So having six beads and then a spacer bead or a little accent bead and then 15 and then 33 and then 33, 15 and then six and then back to my center. And why 108 beads? Um, so it's a, it's a sacred number, 108 is a sacred number. And there are a few reasons why people say that's the number. It's said that there are 108 energy lines that converge to form the heart chakra. It is also said that there are 108 Indian goddess names. I didn't know that. Um, the diameter of the sun is 108 times the diameter of the earth. And it is in astrology, silver is thought to represent the moon and the atomic weight of silver is 108. So there's some fun 108 facts for you. <laughs> Calm is Barbara's name, uh, Barbara's word of the year. And Ramona is asking, Kristen, what is your favorite stone to work with? Oh, that's a big question. Um, I've actually used garnet quite a few times, which is surprising. I'm wearing it today because I don't always think of garnet, but I actually do have quite a few garnet pieces that I've made. Moonstone. I love moonstone. I buy it all the time. Quartz is another one. Um, Sodalite, kyanite, and then I love my greens. So anything that's green, like rhyolite I've worked with, jade, and what else? Peridot is my birthstone. Um, emerald, chrysoprase. <laughs> I can keep going. <laughs> I just love all of them. Rose quartz is a beautiful one. I've used that quite a few times. And um, yeah, and citrine. Those are all. <laughs> Sylvia says, whoa, the diameter fact, right? So it's fun to learn the little weird things like that and how stuff kind of comes to be and, and where there's synchronicities in, uh, in our world. All right. So let's get feeding and I can sit here and chat all day, but I know we want to bead, right? <laughs> so, so if you haven't been to softlexcompany.com, we have a special going on right now. Spend $55, get a free bead strand. Um, it was the purple supernova bead strand that goes along with our supernova design kit. However, we're down to just three bead strands. So we are, um, yeah, so once those three are gone, that sale will end, which will probably happen pretty soon. Uh, so just a heads up on that, and then we'll have a brand new sale on Wednesday for you all. Speaking of sales, we have our live bead sale over at SoftFlex Company's Facebook page tomorrow at noon Pacific time. Those are always fantastic. They're really fun to watch live if you can, but if you can't, they're open until Thursday night. So if you watch it anytime on Tuesday, you can shop and comment um, up until Thursday, then the sale closes and it'll be about a week or so before they process all the orders and get a uh, message out to you on what, what items you got. Everything is first come first served and lots of stuff is limited quantity 
always a great selection and I end up shopping those live sales myself all the time. So we've got that going on tomorrow. And then on Wednesday, we have a live beading party with Cassandra of Beads to Live By. All of that, we've got Supernova Design Kit that's currently out. We have sold out of our Tucson kit for the Great Beat Extravaganza show, but um, we will have some new products we're bringing in for that show, so you can stay tuned and join us even if you didn't get the kit to see what um, Sarah will be working with that we've got new. And we still have a bunch of these um, Lunar New Year kits. So let me switch the camera down and let's look at this real fast and then we'll get going. I'm extra chatty today. It's probably that Monday, Monday morning coffee I had. <laughs> Tammy says, you need to watch the show live and type fast. You do. I've totally missed out on stuff. Um, it's kind of part of the fun though, isn't it? Sometimes I get a little frustrated, but it is kind of part of the fun that you you got to get in there. Oh, you love creating model necklaces. It's how you started your journey in the bead world. Super cool. I kind of came to them a lot later, but they are a lot of fun. So this one was made for me by my friend Amanda of um, Proper Pieces. And I just love it. It has those traditional wood beads in there. But I wanted to share this one with you to show you what, um, a little more traditional. That one's not knotted either, but she used gemstones in there. So this is some goodies from our Lunar New Year design kit. Got this sweet ceramic Buddha. Got a little lucky cat, which these have a name. I wrote it down. I don't want to have to, I don't want to say it wrong. Let me see. Maniki Neko, and they are known as the Beckoning Cat for good luck and good fortune. So you get that little one, and then you get this big one that I'm using here. You'll get some great findings, soft flex, um, gold filled crimp tubes, some ear wires, a clasp, these sweet little moon charms from our friends at Tierra Cast. These are all included in the Lunar New Year design kit. And then you get a few strands of beads. These are really interesting matte check glass beads with kind of a lantern-y shape. These are some black check glass rice beads. These are some really pretty red and AB check glass bicones. And I was trying to figure out how to use this one in my necklace today. I couldn't quite get it in there, but I'm gonna keep it out just in case. I love the shape of them and I love the um, kind of the little bronzy details that are just speckled in there. And then you get a spool of soft flex beading wire in the white quartz, 10 feet. This is um, our 0 0.019 medium diameter, 49 strands in the white. And you get a fun Lunar New Year mix of beads. That all comes in the kit too. I haven't even got a chance to play with this yet. So maybe in an upcoming video, I will do that. Tammy is asking, if you use wooden beads, you shouldn't need to knit between the beads, right? I think a lot of people not um, traditionally because it's supposed to encourage like connection um, between them. But 
and it, it helps when you are doing the meditation to kind of feel where the next one is, but it's not, you know, it's not mandatory, but I think traditionally it has the knots, even with the wooden beads. Okay, so I'm gonna put the kit stuff aside and I've got these gorgeous citrine rondelles that I'm gonna use as my spacer beads. I'll try not to hit the camera. <laughs> and I'm gonna use these as my spacer beads too. These came in the Lunar New Year kit. I love these. These are called Saturn Cut Check Glass Beads and they're kind of a garnet color with a bronze on the sides. And then I have these rondelles that are six millimeter pyrite. They're not super sparkly pyrite, but they are still pyrite. So they're gonna bring in my prosperity, prosperity energy in there. And then I've got these gold, a little bit of an AB finish seed beads. They are tiny. What is the smallest size? Um, 11 maybe? They are teeny tiny, but they are gonna be my spacing instead of knotting. So just like that. And I'm working off a larger spool of the Softlex in the red coral. 15 are the smallest. Yeah. I knew I probably had that wrong. I always forget what's after 11. So 15 are the smallest seed beads. They're probably 15 because they are teeny tiny. So this is gonna be just that citrine in the back is gonna be my, my little spacer bead there. And then I'm gonna do 33 beads over here. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, 16. Okay. So now I can keep chit chatting while I, while I finish uh, stringing this part up. Fifteens <laughs> are the smallest most people use, is what Tammy is saying. They do look like Saturn, don't they? They are so pretty. They were definitely one of our pricier beads that we've uh, put in the kit, but they were worth it. They're so cool. Carolyn loves Mookite. Actually, Mookite was one of the first gemstone necklaces I ever made. I purchased it from Softlex Company when I was in their booth many, many, many years ago. And um, I don't know what I did with that necklace. I must have either given it away or sold it to somebody because <laughs> I don't have it anymore. Um, but it was so pretty. Mukite is a beautiful stone. We'll see how far I get. I might have to kind of quit halfway and show you how to make this little um, this little piece that I'm going to have as my focal. Vicky says, I thought there was a size 13 seed bead. Am I wrong? Lydia has never seen one at a bead store, but that doesn't mean they don't exist. So if anyone knows about a size 13, let us know. There might be. I would think that they would incrementally go down in sizes. I wasn't sure how low they go. So 
So since I'm making a prosperity um, necklace and I want that to be my energy that I'm bringing in, the number that I decided to do for all of these beads is in relation to um, feng shui prosperity numbers. So two numbers that are considered prosperity numbers in feng shui are six and eight. And that can also include numbers that you add together to make six. So for example, I'm using 33. So three plus three is six. And then I'm using 15. Well, five plus one is six. And then I'm using six here. And then I go back the other way. So I'm even trying to call in that prosperous energy with the numbers of beads that I chose to use along with the gemstones of pyrite and citrine. Both are great for um, abundance. And then I've got this wonderful little lucky cat here. Um, it's Maneke Niko or Neko. It originates from Japan and it translates to be beckoning cat. So it's got its little paw up, you see, and it's, it's kind of welcoming you. It's believed to bring good fortune. And they sometimes have the left arm up or the right arm up. Um, they both mean good fortune, but the left arm, the left paw, I should say, the left paw up is for um, welcoming in customers and business. So you'll usually see them in um, shops. Thirty, so just three more left. Sylvia says, our son lives in Japan. Every storefront has the cat. Yes, it is everywhere, right? And I, I was reading about the origins of it, but there are um, some conflicting legends. So I don't know which, I don't know which one is, uh, is true. <laughs> Or it doesn't really matter, I guess. They both kind of, the le both legends kind of come out with the same, um, same meaning. And then if the right paw is up, it is supposed to symbolize good luck and wealth, money. More for your home, I think, more for your, versus the, the store, the business. Okay, so I've got 33 beads here. I'm gonna go ahead and add one of these Saturn beads, one of these Citrine, and another one of these Saturn beads. And that's gonna be my little space marker. And now I'm going to do 15. All right. Vicky is asking, wow, what size thread needle would a person use for 20s and 24s? Are you saying there's 20 and 24 size seed beads, Tammy? <laughs> that sounds insanely tiny. She's Tammy is saying there are 13s, also 20s and 24s now, and they are tiny. Oh my gosh.
I have no idea. This is the, I think I might have gotten a little bit smaller and like a Delica, but I think 15 is the smallest size I've got in my stash. And I find them to be super teeny tiny. I can't imagine getting any smaller. Oh, someone's, um, Deborah is mentioning Charlotte seed beads that have a facet on them, making them extra sparkly. I am not up to speed on what is going on in the seed bead world other than I have just regular seed beads and delicas and a bunch of two hole ones in some fun shapes. But I know that they're always coming out with new stuff. <laughs> Tammy says, too small for her tired eyes. You know, I wonder if those would be fun when you're doing something like um, a Christy Friesen design, when you're using them as a way to embellish some mosaics. And that might be a use I can I can get behind. I don't know if I could if I could string them though. I'm with you. In all honesty, I don't know if I can string them. We do have Softlex beading wire that goes down to a size 0 .1, 0 0.010. And it is suggested to use it for things like embellishments and um, kind of sewing projects or bead weaving projects, things like that. So I wonder, I wonder how that would fit some of those smaller teeny tiny beads and make it a little stronger because the thread is, if you get too thin on your thread, that is going to have some major breakage as uh, Sylvia is saying. <laughs> I'm with you, Becky. I don't see how they can get them any smaller than a 15. <laughs> I don't know why I try and pick them up. I always find kind of poking the wire through them um, when they're on the mat is easier. Whenever I try and pick them up, I don't quite, don't quite get them. Oh, I have in my notes here too that 108 represents the universe. I wonder, in what way? So interesting. All right. So now that I've got 15, I'm gonna go ahead and add my spacer beads again. So I'm gonna do one of these Saturn beads. Ah, I love that red. That's like a garnet red. And I am stringing on red coral. I should have said that actually. I'm stringing on the red coral color, soft flex beading wire in the medium diameter. Ooh, this is so rich looking, right? Look at those colors. Okay, so I gotta cut my next strand open and do six more and then I can get to my little centerpiece here. Those satin beads match my nail polish color I just purchased.
Is it Alina? Alina Diaz? Th Chris says, Kristen, thank you for this demo. I love your design so far. Awesome. Thank you. Fern is loving it too. Thanks for all the love, Nancy and Carolyn. Okay, so now we have to do our last little section, which is six feeds. So if you get the lunar design kit, you'll get those little Saturn beads in there and you'll get the kitty cat and you'll get the white soft legs, which I could have used too, but I think I was just feeling into this red. Since I'm covering most of the soft legs wire color, um, the color doesn't quite matter as much in this particular design. We do have a Lunar New Year trios that we introduced that has the black onyx, the white quartz, and the red coral that I'm using. And it comes in a little three pack like this. You get 10 feet of each of the medium diameter soft leg speeding wire. Oh, that's a tough question. <laughs> Rachel is asking, where did you get the citrine beads? I don't know. <laughs> back in the day when I would be bead buying I didn't pay a lot of attention to where stuff came from and I've had these citrine beads for quite a while but I do know that if you watch one of the Softlex company live sales you will see citrine beads available in lots of different shapes and sizes and price ranges. Um, I just don't know where I got mine in particular because I've had them for a while. Could use some fortune too, yes. I could use some fortune, that is true. All right, so we're up to the point where I'm going to add my little centerpiece here. Before I do that, so I was playing around. I have to take out two of these Saturn beads because I need them for my little spacers. So two of those have to come out. And... I'm trying to decide what I want to put right there. That was the pyrite bead. I could do one of these red beads from the Lunar New Year bead mix. But it feels a bit bright. Then this one was also in the Lunar New Year bead mix, which you can still get. And I thought this one was kind of neat. It's a little bit darker in the red tone. I can't get citrine in there because it's just too thick with the two wires. And I can't use the Saturn one because I need it. <laughs> I need it for the other space. Oh, actually that's not true. Oh, maybe I can use the Saturn one because if I take two out, I only think I need one. Is that right? Two, four, two. No, I need them both. I need them both. Janelda says she liked that red, red one. So this one, the one that kind of looks like a little coral bead, it's a faux, it's kind of a faux coral bead. Maybe I'll put it on this way. Let's 
I do think that's cute. It does bring out the brighter red from the collar. And red is great for abundance. Yes, Nikki, thanks for saying that. I didn't even mention that, that I, I did pick the red wire because it's, um, it's good for luck and grounding and security and power and abundance. So even down to the color of the wire, you can decide, you know, something that based on color energy, how to uh, bring that in there. Okay, so let me take these off. Now, let me see, I was doing this with a little scrap piece of wire. So let me see how I, how I do this while it's actually on. And I could actually not even go up in the point and just let it kind of go like that. It might be easier. I just gotta figure out. So that's the design idea so that I've got the beads and the tassels below the little cat. And then you could make it where you just have the beads run up each side or what I was doing before. was I think I'd have to put this red coral first. And then I'd have to bead down I have to go around and go back up through it. Let me just make sure that I am thinking this through clearly before I string the beads on. Yeah, that was what I did. Okay. Because I was doing it with a little scrap wire. I was like, well, how do I do it when it's actually all one continuous one? <laughs> All right, so we've got our little bead that will be in the center. That's our little triangle red bead. And then I'm gonna add just some seed beads on. Let's do There's eight. All right, let's do 11. And then I'm gonna string through my cat. like that. And then I'm gonna do the bottom loop and come back around to come up here and then attach through that bead. So for my bottom loop, I have to take two of these Saturn beads out.
Tyru is saying, I think two of the red beads would look good in the bottom loop below the Neko. Yeah, that might be a good idea to kind of bring that in there. Grab two more of those. I like that. Oh, I just realized that little seed bead is just gonna get lost in there. So I might as well start with a, might as well start with a pyrite. And maybe I need to have a pyrite on each side. Mm, I think once I loop it, it'll be fine. I don't think I had a pyrite there to begin with. So I think once I loop it, it'll be okay. I'm gonna do three pyrite and then add maybe one of those red beads. Or I can do the Saturn, the citrine, and then one of those red beads. Let's see. So those kind of fall coral beads came out of the Lunar New Year design kit mix. Got to go. Thanks for joining us. I'm glad you enjoyed the process and the thought for this kind of design. I know this, I knew this was going to take a little bit longer today. So thanks for joining me. Yeah, I think that'll work because that'll bring in that red bead up there. So that's gonna eventually go around like that and then we'll go back through. This one feels like it might be a little too big since they are organically shaped. Let me see what else I can find. That one looks like it fits better. You're welcome, Nancy. Nancy says, I loved it and all the information. You're welcome. I don't always get to have more in-depth, uh, thoughtful beading shows, but this one just felt right. I like when I can incorporate that. Beating quick is sometimes great, and being projects that are a little bit longer are also great, right? They both have their place. I love how these gold seed beads kind of help bring that pyrite, make it a little bit little bit more a little bit more pop so I'm going to go back through the, the cat and pull the wire out the other side just like so I'll probably have to kind of pull this down we got that and now I'll string 11 seed beads again. It will be kind of a miracle if I get all these numbers correct. <laughs> when I'm on a video, I 
as you many of you who watch me know, I tend to miscount <laughs> but I'm trying I'm trying to pay attention today. Okay, so I got 11 more beads and then I'm gonna go back up through this red bead here. And it is a little snug, but I know I've gotten it through. There we go. Pull that through and now we just need to make our adjustments here. Get our loop nice and tight. Pull the wire down in both directions so he's nice and centered. And now I'm just going to string up and I'll probably do this not on camera since it's going to be just the same I did before going up the other side. How cute. I'm very excited about this. So I'll show the final design. I'm just going to clip that there and hold it up for a second. I want to see how long it's gotten. Oh, yeah. I'm going to show this to you. I'll hold it up for you all. I'm actually going to cut my wire, too. I was working off the spool today, which was good because... I didn't know how much length of wire I was going to need, and that is a little bit better when you don't want to waste. You don't want to be wasteful. But I sometimes find it a little hard to wrap my, my brain around working off the spool. <laughs> So there's the one side, so cute. And then I think somebody asked what I was wearing, the necklace I was wearing, and I didn't end up taking it off before. So I'm just gonna put it down. Since it's long, I made this one. This one was with garnet, little round garnet beads, also strung on red coral with some little brass beads and then I did chain on one side. I actually did this one for the year of the dragon, which was a long time ago. Had some little focal beads on the one side there with the chain and then I had this gorgeous cloisonne dragon focal bead. So I did this the year of the dragon. I wanna say it was like, 10 years ago, I'll have to look back and see. But this is all garnet and some gold plated and some brass, some chain. Just really fun. I was playing with like an asymmetrical idea with that one. And let me, let me pull, let me hold this one up that we're working on. Kimberly says, hi, Kristen and everybody. She loves making malas, but never made one with soft flex. She's going to give it a try. Looking forward to it. Yeah, please share it with us if you do. You can even not soft flex. Um, this would be a very ambitious design to not all of these, but you can not soft flex if you wanted to. And I just fix my little my little, they're a little off kilter because those beads are kind of organic at the bottom. But I just love the way that one side is turning out. And then I've got a citrine in the center and then I'll just repeat it down the other side. Super cute. As always, I'll share the finished designs in our Friday um, roundup blog and in our emails that go out on Saturday. 
and I'll share it in the Softlex VIB studio group on Facebook. So if you're not over there, you come join us on Facebook. It's a wonderful beating group. And if you are there, we love having you and we love when you share what you're working on. So please go ahead and share what you're working on, whether it's with the Lunar New Year kit or something else. Or if you decide to make a mala, I would totally love to see it. You can even tag me, Kristen Fagan. Um, it matches me. It does. <laughs> It does. I'm all in red and black today. I am feeling it. <laughs> um, so thanks for being here with me today and spending a little time working on this Mala style necklace for prosperity. I'm excited to do some prosperity meditations and have some mantras this year. And then you can hold your design and count your mantras as you go through for the 108 number. Um, yeah, or I can just wear it and remind myself of my word of the year. So I wish you a wonderful new year and happy Lunar New Year. Catch us tomorrow at the Softlex Company's Facebook page for our next live bead sale. And then join us on Wednesday for a new live beading party with me and Sarah. And um, that's at 3 p.m. Pacific time. And the live bead sale is at noon Pacific time. Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful beady week and um, let's just live through our friends that are all in Tucson, right? Check out Marisol's IG and Candy Cooper and Jamie from the Bead Gallery, Honolulu, uh, and go see what they're up to and what they're, what they're looking at. It's always fun to have more inspiration, isn't it? All right. Thanks, everybody. Happy New Year. See you next Monday here on... Free Spirit Beating for um, a new episode at 1 p.m. Pacific time. Talk to you later.